The Russian leader clearly explained a few weeks ago that in his vision, the origin of the problem was in the times of Lenin, when the communist leader accepted Ukraine's separation from Russia, as part of the strategy to consolidate Bolshevik power in his country and avoid war with the West. However, Putin believes that Ukraine is part of his country and that it should be reintegrated. Probably, in this military offensive he does not seek this objective directly, but through the installation of a pro-Russian regime in that country and the acceptance that the areas that make up the so-called Donbass be separated from Ukraine. For Putin, a Ukraine belonging to the European Union is not negotiable, as President Zelensky requested yesterday, and even less close to NATO. That doesn't explain the timing of the invasion. Since 2014, when Crimea was separated and occupied by Russian forces, a military offensive like the one we see today could have taken place. The fact that this military offensive has not been presented has to do with the international situation. Putin considers that today he has a more favorable context, despite the appearances that he is isolated. It is obvious that the set of sanctions that the West is applying to it was included in the crisis scenarios that the Russian elite should have explored. There are those who think that Putin could be very concerned about the internal effect of them on his country. An autocrat knows that in certain circumstances he can have the support of the people and in other occasions not. And that is not decisive. In the end, his power does not derive from popular support. For the same reason, he can make the decisions that, in his opinion, are pertinent. Although Putin is not an admirer of Lenin, he is to some extent his heir. He is someone who knows that the masses are not aware of what is good for them and presumes that he is the one who has the knowledge and the ability to impose his will to make what is good for his people happen. That is why Ukraine is non-negotiable for Putin. If he doesn't win the war, he knows it may be the shipwreck of him. For that reason, he will go for everything. He considered the Western weakness and division at this time to be the right time, his alliance with China. His profile is known in police circles. He is about that terrorist who carries a bomb tied to his body and who has the ability to negotiate his conditions or make the device explode. Putin may appear to some to be a madman. But he isn't. It seems that he is a player of international strategy who is taking things to the extreme, betting that his opponents are timid enough not to respond to him and on that basis gain space to negotiate, since he does not really intend to blow himself up. Putin does not want war with the United States, what he wants is to be allowed to be Great Russia, reconquering territories, and once again becoming a country that is not only a military power, but also an economic and strategic power. The problem is that his aspirations are from the 19th century when we are already in the 21st century. Let's hope the reality check doesn't make the terrorist detonate his explosive. No one knows what the consequences would be.